Thank you, Mr. Chair. Since we do have new members, I, I, I just want to say one more time. Um, the reason that we were interested in, in considering this bill was because, you know, through the work that we've done, we learned that it was possible for um, uh, a foreign co company, an international company, to do business with the state of Maine. And if there were a dispute, that dispute would get settled in an international tribunal in Geneva, um, possibly, um, by a group of international trade lawyers, and we would lose our capacity to have the dispute settled in the main court system, as is now the practice. So this was a way of trying to protect the state um, and the people of Maine. And that's really the impetus behind this. Right. When the commission uh, proposed to study and then did study in, in conjunction with um, uh, our technical friends uh, on the state's uh, water committee, issues relating to um, uh, groundwater and extraction of water, there were a lot of issues that were much, that were addressed in that lengthy report thanks to a lot of effort um, uh, on the part of a number of people that went, that were much broader than simply questions about um, the state's regulation of water extraction uh, and state regulation in general. And one of the questions that, that, one of the recommendations that came out of that report was that the state might require that when state entities are contracting, that they include a provision in their contract that requires parties who choose to contract with the state to agree that if they have a dispute with the state that they would bring it in a forum in the state and not in an arbitration panel pursuant to an international treaty agreement or some other forum that would not be domestic, in other words, courts in the state of Maine. And because the state has the right to determine whether to opt in or out of agreements with respect to the procurement issue, this seemed to be particularly a um, good place for the state to take a position saying that not only do we not want to opt in, we want to make sure that we preserve our right for contractual disputes, which typically are dealt with under state law, to continue to be dealt with under state law, regardless of who might be on the other side of that contract. And so it was the commission's choice to pursue that legislation. And basically what it says is that a contract for procurement of services, materials, or equipment, and this is under the section that um, governs state contracting, must contain a provision requiring the contractor to bring any dispute arising from the contract in the courts in this state and a waiver of any right that the contractor might have to assert a remedy in a different form, including arbitration under an international trade agreement. So that's the proposal. I think there's, there are going to be, of course, there are arguments about, uh, or will be if this gets um, challenged, about whether or not there's federal preemption of this provision, notwithstanding the procurement requirements. But we think we have a decent shot at defending this. Representative Tree. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. I had a question just about current practice. Um, is it the current practice that the state always would go to uh, a state court in a dispute relating to procurement? I mean, is that what we typically have always done? Or has it ever been resolved in other forms? In fact, that's something that Bill Lobenstein pointed out to me, the liar's language in the standard state contract that says that contractors agree to the jurisdiction of the state so that, and normally the dispute about the language of a contract would be dealt with in state court. But that's only a provision in the contract. It's not a provision in statute. So it made sense to me to continue with the effort to put it in statute. And also, it's in the contract as sort of a general contracting procedure, not as something that is specifically addressing the international trade question. 
So for those both those reasons, it's, it made sense to put it in the statute. But yes, that is typically how those cases are brought. This is basically continuing what is current practice in terms of how contracts have always been drafted, but it's putting it into law so that we have something that's there in terms of the international trade agreements, which if it is going to be effective, it needs to be in statute, not just in those contracts one by one. Okay. The, the, the other question I have is um, on the second line, why can't we require the contractor and or its investors to bring any dispute? I mean, that's one of the issues we've had, the investors going to an international tribunal. I think we could add that. It still refers to disputes relating to the contract. Right. Well, if, if I, if my little company or uh, my my big cohort over here, if, if his company, if his investors want to bring suit, and let's say he's an international company, why shouldn't this be just as restrictive? That's that's my question. Why can't we include them if we're going to include the contractor? Why can't we include the investors in the contract? With Mr. Delahanty sitting out there writing down everything I say, I have to say to you that it might be easier to defend against the contractor than investors, but I don't think there's any reason why we shouldn't make that change. The, the phrase uh, in the courts in this state, does that include federal courts in the state? Well, normally, um, jurisdiction would be in the state court. As I mentioned, the contract itself contains a provision that says it's in state court. If somebody wanted to bring an action in federal court, they'd have to demonstrate jurisdiction in federal court. And we would still, even if there were some basis to bring the case in federal court, we would still take the position that the construction of the contract is a matter of state law and that, as to which we would need to get a ruling from a state court. So if they were to bring it in a state court, and then does the next line saying, um, Regarding the remedy in a different forum, does that preclude a federal court for appeal? No. It doesn't? Okay. We wouldn't have the ability to deprive a federal court of justice. 